Hey guys, welcome to the show. This week I'm taking a look at the Webley and Scott Pro Comps. There are two of them because we have a skeleton stock, fully adjustable, and we have this walnut number with just an adjustable comb. Um, I do hope that they supply additional spaces or book pads because as standard at the box, this is 14 and a half and it's a bit short, even though I actually prefer this gun to shoot. We'll get at the impression in a bit, but it'd be nice if I could get adjustable pads for this. Um, obviously, uh, this one, fully adjustable, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. So, we'll do oily bits, and then we'll do shooting impressions. All right, so, these were launched at BSS this year. This is, I think, a very early um, product run model, so they're a little bit rough compared to what I think is on the market. Um, that said, uh, we've got, on this one, 30 inch, on this one, 32. Actually, I've got the wrong way around. This is 32, that's 30. Um, extended multi-chokes, 18.5 board, superior steel proof, three inch chamber, ventilated mid rib, 11 mil non-tapered top rib uh, with a brass mid bead and a red front bead. I'm not a huge fan of the mid bead, but then again, I'm not a huge fan of mid beads in general. Beaver till four end, nice bit of wood actually, not bad at all. Um, the timber on them is pretty decent. Um, finish, again, this is an early model. I think the finish on the newer ones is on, on the more production guns will be nicer. Uh, machine cut checkering, uh, the action itself, very simple, black with a blue accent. The blue accents carry on through the, the gun. We've got a spacer at the back, uh, the trunnion cap and uh, in the, the choke rings. Got a little bit of uh, kind of standout uh, blue. The decoration is very simple. Webley and Scott logo on the bottom, Pro Comp on the side. Webley and Scott engraved on the top of the monoblock. Monoblock itself, engine turned, lockup is very similar to some other guns at this price point. Bifurcated lump on the bottom of the monoblock with um, a bar that comes out from the breech face that locks everything up. Uh, yeah, ejectors and timing is okay at the end of the day don't forget this is a budget gun nine and a half pounds all in both guns very heavy very 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 clay guns um definitely not something you want to take out on the game field but then again when was the last time you saw a glove grip on a game field trigger is non-adjustable um actually it is adjustable i lied it's an adjustable inertia unit um trigger pull is agricultural okay these are budget guns, okay? 1,100 pounds for this one, 1,200 pounds for the skeleton one. You, you must accept if you want this level of feature set in a gun at this price point that you have to accept that there will be price savings in the manufacturing process. Um, that said, there's, it's perfectly acceptable. I've shot worse. Um, barrel selector on top with the safety and obviously the top lever. Then we come back to the interesting bit. We've got a glove grip and adjustable comb. Glove grip, a little bit of a palm swell. Shapes all right for this, for me, with my medium-sized hand. Reach the trigger's fine, although the trigger is most of the way back. I mean, not all the way back, but it definitely could go shorter or longer. Um, if I had a criticism, I wish the thumb wasn't quite so acute in terms of the angle that it forces your thumb into. On both guns, it's the same. Um, but then again, I think if, if you could, if you wanted to, you could have this modified. Um, but I just wish it was a little bit more relaxed in terms of where it puts your thumb. Comb shape and size is fine. The, the stock dimensions are actually pretty good. Don't hate this at all. A little bit short in the comb on this one, so a little bit short in the length of pull, as I said, but you could fettle that if there were spaces or different recoil pads. Weight-wise, this uh, I had to chuck a little bit of weight in the back of this to get it to balance up. It was very barrel heavy with a 32 inch barrel, um, but again, easy done. Definitely, I think I prefer this one both aesthetically and to shoot. For whatever reason, it just feels a little bit nicer to shoot than the, the skeleton stock version. But, of course, what you're getting with the skeleton stock is adjustability. Everything else is the same, stock slightly different. We've got this uh, aluminium uh, stock with all the adjustability built in. Comb height, length of pull, cast, pitch, etc. Uh, we've even got this weight, this blue weight. Now, it allows you to change the balance point. Uh, I find it quite uncomfortable the other way around, which is the way it came. Uh, just It digs into you when you're reloading, because I'm quite fat. Um, I switched it around, it's absolutely fine. 
Uh, yeah. Obviously this one, I've adjusted it to be a bit longer. Everything is done with spacers. We've got the comb height and the um, length of pull are adjusted with a spacer so that everything locks up and it's all just tightened with uh, machine screws. The checkering is a little bit variable. It's a bit deeper on this gun than it is on that gun. But again, these are early models and I do think it'll be a bit nicer when you get full production. Parkerized finish on both guns should last. Parkerizing is generally pretty um, uh, resilient, but it's not the prettiest. These aren't designed to be pretty. They're designed to give you features at price. Price, as I said, 1100, 1200. And for that money, there's bugger all else in the market that you can get this feature set um, for, this, for this amount of money. But you must remember, expensive guns are built to a standard. Cheap guns are built to a budget, and that's basically the big difference. You must accept that to get this, you've had to give off a little bit of quality. Things like uh, metal to metal fit is a bit variable. There are some variable gaps in the, uh, in the metal to metal fit. Wood to metal fit is actually excellent. There's no problems there at all that I can see. Uh, no, actually this is really good. It's just the metal to metal fit. And this may improve over time. Again, remember these are early guns. Shooting wise, however, much as my initial impressions when you open the box is a, kind of a bit, okay, because they they're not the nicest in terms of curb appeal, shall we say. From a distance, sure, but once you get up close and you look at the quality, you can tell these are made to a budget, but to shoot, there's, there's no wrong with them. As I said, the trigger pull is a bit aggry, right? But it wouldn't be the first time I've had a gun with an aggry trigger. Once you get used to it, it is perfectly acceptable. Um, once you understand how it works and get a few, you know, get a couple of hundred rounds to it, you're absolutely fine. Obviously, a nine and a half pound gun isn't gonna leap about the sky, but very, very deliberate. Um, both of them, Although what I'd probably do, if I was based on the weight, I would go for this stock, but the 30 inch barrel would be my personal preference. The interesting thing is how are these going to sell against, for 1100 quid, you're looking at second hand 686, second hand 525. Uh, you could have two 80 years. Um, it's what do you want out of the gun? And obviously, this level of adjustability, canny bit of timber in both cases, you're not gonna get that for that money anywhere else. You're really not. I think the cheapest TSK stocked 694 is like four and a half. So you could have three of these. <laughs> that said, caveat emptor, Turkish guns, um, we don't know, these are brand new out this year. We have no idea how these things are gonna perform longevity wise. However, um, I know the guys at Highland will look after the warranties because they are keen to build this brand. And the only way they're gonna do that is with rock solid warranty support. So, would I buy one? Now, no. But when I was a newbie, would, would, my, would my gaze be swung by a gun that looks like this for this money? Maybe. Maybe, if I wanted something with a glove grip, if I were that way inclined, I don't know, man. Definitely worth a shot, definitely worth a try. Let's be open-minded. Um, I hope they do well. I hope they do well, and I hope that they build off this. Um, I'd be very interested to see how well they perform in the market going forward. What do you guys think? Do you fancy them? Do you, <laughs> what's your thoughts? I know these things have generated a lot of interest. They were always in people's hands at BSS. They were very much a hot ticket item. So I'm quite intrigued to see how well these do in the marketplace. Have you bought one? What do you think? Tell me about your experiences. Yeah. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>